we hear Johnny Cash playing as Josh Harvey walks to the ring. It's an exciting match, man, to get caught, old John, with the, uh, um, getting that arm stuck in there off a, kind of a fireman's carry, right? It was a beautiful takedown attempt, but that's what we talked about. It was a high risk, high reward move. Absolutely. Gave up his back and pain jumped on it. Absolutely. If he could have got the underhook out a little bit faster, you'd have been okay. But it, you know, it, it has been beautiful. It was, it was an very, exciting very... technique to yeah. use. And like, it, he damn near got it. He did, yeah. No risk, no reward, right? We've been hearing some very epic walkout music. So yeah. Far. The MMA guys got something to live up to with the walkout music, huh? There you go. Very intense walkout here from Nico Regali out of the Map Factory in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Lower Borough, Pennsylvania, I should say. Oh, Basically Pittsburgh, I think. 90 pounds in the no gi well, jiu jitsu. Too, fighting out of the exactly blue corner there, he from he the his, Matt Factory in Lower Burrell, Pennsylvania. Nico so, Regali! Um, wonder how he picked which one to corner. You know? It's probably the one he likes more. Yeah. Exactly. And in the yeah. red corner, yeah. out of ground yeah. zero in Bridgeport, West Virginia, Josh Harvey! Very impressed with everybody at the Matt Factory that I've seen that's competed with us in MMA. Yeah, uh, I think it's Isaac Greeley. I believe he runs that gym. And you know, if not, I know he's, he's one of the top dogs there. But all of those guys are well-trained, well-coached. Um, and the same goes for Ground Zero uh, Bridgeport and all those guys for Ground Zero Fighting Systems. They're amazing. You know, that's, that's the one good thing, not the one good thing, but what I want to say is, you know, jiu-jitsu and MMA and the training in West Virginia is, is top-notch, and we're getting to display it with the gyms here. Um, so hopefully, you know, the fans get to see the skill here coming from all these gyms, and that's, that's kind of the point. We want to showcase what everybody's got. Look at that. Nice wrestling. These, these tie-ups are good, man. Both these guys' hips very low yeah. back. They definitely know what they're doing in the clinch. And nice level change there, but he's wise to it. Yeah, and he's quickly got his hips away. As you said, like, you know, to, to the average fan, this just looks like, you know, a couple guys grabbing the head. But this is a lot of intricate work there. They're doing a lot of hand fighting, positioning for underhooks, um, you know, grabbing the head a certain way. See right there is a nice looking trip, but he reversed it into a nice takedown. Up there. I mean, Josh Harvey. Very, very high level grappling right there, just on the takedown. But he's got a nice shoulder crunch slash overhook right here um, that he can push away for... An arm bar or an omoplata. He's got a couple moves here on That's the bottom. That's a deep, deep, deep overhook he's got there. Yeah, and Let's he knows what it. He does with it. Oh, but he stepped right over like it was nothing. He, he blocked that, so it's great defense. And he's working his way into half. Yeah, if Josh is doing excellent. If he can shove that knee down, he could step right through. Yes, it looks he goes. great, man. This is good high-level passing but versus good guard retention. Every time he brings that leg back, I'd uh, like Josh to steps him. over get heavier on top with his hips lock that leg down so he can't get guard, full guard back yeah and as you said a lot of guys here josh would could triangle his legs there and that would make sure that you know it limits the guard work coming see, back there he goes back to full guard he's uh, too much space on top absolutely but he, man his his passing looks really good. look at that his passing looks great as you said like the passing looks good. I, w I would argue that maybe it needs a little bit more tighter pressure, as you said, One a little bit more control. One of the coolest quotes that I ever heard about jiu-jitsu was Hickson talking, and he said, Took the back. If I'm going from A to B, I don't want to go back to yes. A. If yeah. I go from B to C, I'm not going back to B. Exactly. And that's, you know, the Gracies are saying always improve your position, right? You know, pass guard, side body, two mount, right? You're always putting the pressure on, making that guy suffer. And then that's when they make mistakes if there's pressure. But you like, see, this is a sign of a good grappler. He's just flowing on him. But yeah, now he loses position, ends up on his back. Yep. That's why position over submission always. And he stayed calm that whole time. Even when I was saying, man, his passing looks elite. He's coming. Nico stayed calm on the bottom, and now he's looking to do his passing, and he's doing a good job controlling the legs here. And now let's see Nico's top game, because I have a feeling that he's a top player as well. Yeah, and it's, it's doing a good job of leg pinning here. Uh, some guys will even step in the legs here. Nice little leg drag looking. 
But I also think Nico might be seeing what Josh has to offer here. Um, He's working his way past, but Josh is doing a good job with that open guard. Yeah, and he, he was content to kind of just jump back into his full guard there. I think he, he gave a little bit of effort, but didn't want to get caught with anything. And he's trying to do that double ankle sweep, but Nico's base is too good for that. Yeah, and, you know, the new thing people are doing, too, is in no gi um, is, uh-oh, he's coming out to the side here. This is a good leg lock position here for Josh, if you could have got there. Nice but, pass. Yeah, use it to pass. It's the downside or the risk versus reward, as we talked about earlier. He just shucked those legs aside and slid right into side control. His beautiful job passing. They're good smash passing. Now, as you said, look how low his hips were right there. Now, he's, he's got to use his hips. see how... He's blocking the hip more. With his knee, yeah. That's what I was going to say. He, he had a good hip pressure there, but he had to switch it to knee pressure because Josh got on his side. I'm trying to see what he's doing with that far side arm. I think he's controlling the leg with that as well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, he, well, he's just knowing where the hips are at, right? He's controlling the hips. Good good knee right there by Nika, right on the hip. And then with the added pressure of the cage, there's just not a lot for Josh to do down there as far as moving his hips. I don't. You know, this is very smart work on the top because he's no danger of getting submitted because he's got the hips and everybody locked in, right? Beautiful job. They're using that hand to block the hips so he can't recover. Now he's going to probably try to drag him to his back. Uh-oh, he's coming out. He's coming out. It's the thing about a cage is now he can kind of he, walk himself up. He's working that front headlock position. I know Chris Dempsey trains a lot at the Matt Factory. Chris Dempsey's got a wicked front headlock. They sure do, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, they call it the Chrisatine or the... Dempsey something, or, but he definitely has his own workshop. So that was beautiful. So a lot of times in the jiu-jitsu MMA world, right, if you can keep your back flat to the cage, it stops people from taking your back, and that's how they wall walk up, right? Um, he did a great job there. Uh, this both is these guys are great. Excellent matchup. Yeah. Can't say enough. I know we brag about it all the time on the matchmaking a lot for Keith, but Zach did a wonderful beautiful. job with all this, too. Beautiful job by Nico. Uh-oh. That get, almost got under the chin. Getting around to the back and just circling, following him there until he's in a great spot. Now let's see how, how he does here, taking the back, getting that bottom. He's looking for that bottom hook. Yeah, Nico's very relaxed. And there it uh, is. Until he's been here before. But you see there, he's creeping over that. He's found that. Other side, he's creeping over that bottom hook, trying to escape. He's going to switch his arm triangle. Yep. It's a good one-two punch. Out of the frying pan and into the fire here. Yeah, he's doing, uh, Josh is doing a good job of controlling the wrist there. And he, he came to the, to the knees there, which is, man, he's looking. He's out there doing some really high-level stuff here. I'd they like to good. see him just pop to his feet. As they say, just stand up. Yep. Well, but he actually really could. So, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Nice reversal. And man, it just seemed like Nico there took a break or something, but now he's into the uh, uh, scarf hold. Which I'm not a fan of because no. of that. I I don't like that scarf hold position because it gives you that gives your opponent that underhook. Yeah, I think we all agree, right? That's typically in judo or jiu-jitsu we do a modified scarf hold, which is the underhook to avoid these uh, escapes. But some guys really like that position and are really good at it but your pressure has to be perfect yeah and and that's a good point you know dan severin and mark coleman back in the day they could just grab the yeah. head and wrench you out you josh know? barnett submitted Absolutely. dean lister with it Absolutely. which is bananas at the time nobody would have expected especially that. at that level you wouldn't expect a dean lister kind of got to get in there but you know unless you've been there you literally can't breathe and uh it's a heck of a move now this is very good pressure again he's using the cage nice. this time headlock there yeah let's see what he can do with it i wouldn't be surprised if this one hits overtime we got three minutes but it's been dead even so far and i can't really nobody's really getting he has good control of the neck here but nico's controlling that leg and looking to yep. drive him over nico's gonna step yep he did he's got the sweep here already just by stepping over that leg he can kind of drag him down but josh can use his back against the cage really as we say he should just stand up right now he, he needs to wrestle he waited too long Nice job, though, and he's caught. That's that's he, why I said he waited so long. You know, I think he'll get out of this, but um, he, yeah, his I think he he's not got the angle for that arm in. No, which is and it's hard to finish it up against the cage. That's like exactly. That. I was gonna say credit to Josh. He's keeping his back against the cage. Um, keep out of that submission. That was a good setup there by Nico, though, going into that guillotine. Yeah, for look, a moment there, here, I thought he had it. Here comes Nico for the armbar, and up oh, gave it up. He had a couple of nice moves. Nico, I mean, again, guard work is very good by Nico. These guys are very, very good. He's working that sit-up sweep series. Yeah. Going back to the neck here. And he's 
Got a good lock on it now. He's just got to crunch. If he can just crunch, I think he may have this one. Wonder how tired they are with two minutes. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I think Nico is not going to put the effort into it. But beautiful job getting his head out of there, getting out of danger because uh, he had a good bite on the neck. He's doing good. Nico's also doing a good job with these um, hooks he's doing with his legs, which is very. You know, sometimes that'll disrupt the base, uh, drop a guy to his belly a little bit, and that kind of starts. It definitely works their head, but. You know, I'd like to see him work that Kimura a little bit from there, and that looks like what he's thinking about. Yeah. It's got a good angle. I mean, they both, again, like this is counter, counter, counter. Even when we start to think a guy's getting a little bit of an angle, the other guy corrects it right away. This is uh, very, very high-level jiu-jitsu by these guys. They look I'm really good. excited for the EBI overtime in this match if we make it there. And these are two explosive guys, right? That's the key with uh, EBI overtime is usually whoever's the most explosive is going to win. Obviously, you have to have a good technique, too. But if you're a very passive guy, overtime's not the best place for you. Now, tell me. If this were going to the decision, this is a hundred percent. How would right you here. score this match? It's. I would call so, it a draw. So bad. Yeah, I would call it a draw at this point. I can't say that anybody's had. Um, and there have been no clear submit. There have been had, no submission attempts so far. It's just posi a positional dominance battle. Yeah, yeah. There's been some rear naked attempts. There's been smart, but they're just these guys are so good at nothing. That I thought. Oh yeah, he's in big trouble. Absolutely. That guillotine. So even a here, bit of danger. he can get a head and arm choke here, Nico. He's got the arm, but he went to mount instead. Um, but look look how fast Josh looks like he's ready to counter and get out of mount. Yeah, so he's already out. That's what's hard about these guys. I mean, they're so good and so high level that the, Senate, the second a guy gets position, he loses it in three seconds. You know, like these guys are very, very doing good. Now, this is great. He pulled the... So all he has to do, though, is go back flat to his back. But then, ironically, that'll give up mount, which is a good game plan by Nico. Well, that's the thing I'm surprised about... Josh is letting him get this deep on his on choke here. He's, I guess, obviously, he's just not too worried about it. But He's got good wrist control. So we're hitting our first overtime here in five seconds. This is going to be exciting. So for people that don't know what EBI overtime is, so I, I believe we're going to start with both of them having back control. So the difference on this one as opposed to normal is we count normally they count the time. We're not really necessarily going to do that. If both people are able, if they get submitted, um, then we go on to the next thing. If one guy gets submitted, he loses, right? Um, so basically, though, we're going until we see a finish. We're going to try to, yes. We do have some stipulations. I was going to look it up, but we have some stipulations if it doesn't quite hit the overtime, so uh, meaning yeah. there is no submissions because we can't Our go on forever. I'm really you excited could ignore about this rule stuff, I did though, not you know, We talked a little bit about it before. It's hard for the layman to watch jiu-jitsu when they don't understand jiu-jitsu because you don't know what's going on, but you, with this, you're always going to see somebody get finished for yeah. the most part. You're always going to see action. Eddie Bravo came up with a brilliant uh, rule set to make jiu-jitsu more compelling. He did, and he and he's done a great job. I mean, there, there's been things like this before, but he put it on a national stage um, where, you know, now everybody's used to seeing this, used to doing it. Um, all right, here we go. I'm going to read you guys a little bit over time here. So we're going to start in the back escape. Like I said, um, each person gets a chance to go into a submission. If a submission does not occur, we're going to go to the next one. We're just going to be in armbar position. Um, he's doing good there with those that, that hand fighting. So far, he's not in any danger. But to answer our question earlier, I wanted to verify it. If we do end up going to a third overtime, meaning the first two positions don't cause a submission or you know both tie, um, it's going to be the first points win in the in the overtime. So. So, yeah, so the way we do this, too, like, technically, if you guys remember, we had a Zach Humberson versus uh, Zach Wilds fight, right? And this is how Zach um, escaped. We did a modification of that rule because of that um, and because it's a little bit more exciting, meaning that he's not actually really out of anything. As you said earlier, into the... Out of the prime yeah. and into the fire situation. Yeah, he, he turned right into that arm prime. But now, if he gets this back which I would argue I could, you could stop it, right? As soon as he gets that knee, then he's, he's technically out, unless he's in a submission, right? So if he's in an arm triangle or something, we're going to have to let that run. But 
Yeah, here now I feel like it's yeah. time. It should, should, yeah, it should should be it. Zach over there corner, but it should be that should be it. That's yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, it should have been it a while ago. So we, we need to yeah. We need we need to get that one called a little bit sooner, but that's okay. It's hard when we change these rules around a little bit. You know, Josh has probably just seen these. Well, you know, this isn't even a hybrid of EBI that I've not seen before, and I like the idea. I like the idea that everybody's going to have a chance to see a finish. Exactly, and that was our thoughts. But in end, we kept it um, shorter, meaning because Keith doesn't want us going all day either. So the one minute is all we're running on these instead of like here you go until you get out, right? And we see here the tables have turned. Nico's in the bad spot, and he escapes quickly. And I think that's about. But it. he's into an arm bar, and that's the point, right? So and he he can still go for this I arm bar. I thought his elbow was out, but it's like it he got he snatched it he, back up. This he did is a, a good really spot. good job getting it out there. Beautiful, beautiful and job. Now, he's got him in some danger here. Yeah, I, I feel like Nico's going to get out of this, um, but yeah. So now we're going to go to the second overtime, which is going to be the arm bar positioning here. So that was very good by both of them. And we are joined by the man himself, Keith No, for the EBI overtime rounds. Our first EBI overtime rounds of the first New Line Grappling Series. So, Keith, how have you been uh, watching the grappling so far? Oh, man, this is pretty cool, man. I love this stuff. You know, I've missed a little bit of the missed some of the first few matches had some stuff going on in the back with the commission but uh all good now so it's nice you know seeing this high it really what this gives an opportunity to to show and showcase some gyms around the area that don't necessarily get showcased because maybe they don't fight mma so you know that's another nice thing and it's nice seeing how well-rounded all these gyms are and what they have to offer so now we're going to go into the uh second ebi overtime which all of these are just a minute, you know. Um, this is what we call the spiderweb position or armbar. He's allowed to grab the leg. By grabbing that leg, it helps um, avoid the escape. Typically, people just kind of hip out and roll over, but by grabbing that leg, it kind of helps counter that. But I bet you most people let go of that leg right away. Oh, he's got him. Yeah, and this is, uh, man, yeah. Nico's strong. So close. Good job getting his hands back together. I uh -oh. thought it was over. Yeah, Josh needs to roll towards the head. Yeah, he's going to. He's in a bad spot. If he here. gets that arm, yeah, see, perfect. That's one of the favorite positions for me. When I am going for an armbar as well, I like to go towards the head. You're stronger towards your chest. Your last chance here is that hitchhiker, and you have to time it perfectly. Well, I'll tell you what, Nico did a hell of a job. Every time that we thought he was done, he came back. Oh, right, here. right there. I think he might get it. And then he again. may be able to hitchhike, but it's got to be perfect. Oh, he's, he's digging deep. He's digging deep. We'll there see. Here he comes. Here he comes. Yeah, now if he gets to his knees, Beautiful he goes out. Job. Man, what a what tough, a warrior. Tough, tough guy because it looked very dangerous there. And here's an interesting thing we'll see. We'll see how, how tired Nico's arms are because now it's his turn. But his arms might be too tired to get the finish, right? But you can say the same for Josh. You've been ch chugging on that thing for, you know, that whole 30, 40 seconds there. So they're both going to be tired here. I was in there and somebody grabbed my arm. I just stand up. That's what they say, huh? There we go. So here we go. We see Nico trying to finish this arm bar here. And see how close he is there? Like, tight. yeah, he's doing a pretty good job. He's taking a more slow and methodical approach rather than the explosive approach that we saw Josh take. Yeah. We'll see which one pays off. Because look, he's, you know, Josh is, Josh, he's taking risks. He's letting go of that arm, you know. And that head control is a big deal. If you can break their posture with that leg over the face. I think Josh is about out. I think he got his elbow out. He's out. Yeah, Josh All right, so. Harvey to stack out of that arm bar. This is the final round. So now it's first points win. Uh, sudden death over time. And this will this be interesting. So we start on the feet here. Yes. Yeah. So basically first takedown wins. Yes, first take down, unless they sit to guard, guard pulling is allowed. Um, and then at that point, it'll be first points or position. Uh, so if you're a guy that's not confident in your wrestling, you would pull guard out of the gate here. Absolutely. Try to make something happen from your guard. Yeah, absolutely. Before they can pass. And we'll see who, who, uh, who folds first, right? Both of these guys have pretty good equal wrestling, right? I definitely think we're going to see a wrestling match for this overtime round. I don't think we're going to see either guy pull guard. Matt Factory's, you know, 
known for their wrestling. Right. So the fact that this is such a competitive thing, and look at that, Josh has there got it, is. it. He's so close. Oh my, oh, he's deep now, but I think da, that's he's it. got it. That's it. That's and it. Oh, he's got to clear the head. Yeah, so so for people Pico that don't know. Pico has to finish this guillotine to win. Yeah, if he finishes the guillotine oh and he God. wins, the second the head pops out, he wins. He's tight, he's has yeah. it very tight too, and he's getting that angle. Holy smokes. And yeah. he taps. Well, I don't know if he tapped, I don't know what happened there. Did he tap? Let's take a look at the replay here. I think I he's believe. bummed because I think he thought he had the yeah, victory, right? right. Yeah. He lost the guillotine. I got excited. Yeah, we, we still don't know. <laughs> I thought he there tapped. Look here. It's dead to right. It's tight, 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 tight. Super tight guillotine there. Yep. There it is. Yep. Wow. wow. Crazy, huh? He had that. Right when we thought it was over. What a heck of a job by Nico there, man. Pulls it out. Of am, I, am I wrong? Or is Nico also a professional wrestler on the side? He looks like one. I don't know, man. He's He pulled Vic.